nerfed raid farms, nerf mace, three new mace enchants, four new potion effects for four new farms. Hello there, Ray here. Let's take a look at all that and much more in this quite large snapshot, which will eventually turn to the Minecraft update 1.21. They also said that this update is going to have the last big change for this version. So click that like button and let's get into it. The maze cannot be enchanted like other items with mending, unbreaking, fire aspect, curse of vanishing, and also a choice between smite and bane of arthropods. But there's maze specific enchantments like destiny. This is a common enchantment that you can get from like enchanting table or enchanted books from looting and can go up to level 5. With this enchantment you can do an additional damage per block that you fall with each level giving you an additional damage. So with level 5 and just falling one block, you can do 8 additional damage with a single hit. There's also the Breach enchantment which goes up to level 4. This is a rare enchantment but can still be found inside enchanting tables and enchanted books. And its special ability is when used, it will reduce the effectiveness of armor by 15% per level. And some mobs have invisible armor levels like zombies. Of course players who wear armor are not going to be as safe with this Breach enchantment. There's also the Wind Burst enchantment. This goes up to level 3 and this enchantment can only be found in the new Ominous Vaults. When used will emit a blast just like the Wind Charge. With more levels you can get higher up in the air. And you can string these tacks together so you can stay up in the air. A cool way you can kind of get the Wind Charge effect without having to have a whole bunch of them. That'd be a cool way to kind of access your base just by having an armor stand always being there. This can be used to move items from dead mobs off to the side whenever a mob dies and does this wind charge pushing. With all these cool enchantments you can get quite a bit of use out of this. And these new enchantments cannot be applied to normal weapons. The mace has a new particle effect when it comes to hitting mobs. This only occurs when the smash is enabled. You also increase the power and range when it comes to how far it can knock back other things. But only occurs when you fall from greater than 5 blocks. And all vertical motion is stopped. Notice the player kind of stops in midair before falling again when there is a successful smash. This way you don't have to worry about accidentally getting some type of fall damage afterwards. But if you continue to fall you will get it. The additional damage which is done from the smash attack has been reduced down to 1.5 blocks per fallen block. So you'll have to be slightly higher when wanting to kill mobs. The new mace weapon got nerfed today. Before you could actually use this falling with the Lytra to actually hit a mob and the mace would count this going down really fast with the Lytra as the player falling which would work with the mace's ability where the farther you fall the more damage you can do whatever entity you hit. So I could one hit this villager here very easily and if you're really quick you could pull out of the Lytra dive and save yourself from all that kinetic energy that would normally kill you. Now I already did a whole video about this nerf and new ways you can still do massive amount of damage easily in survival. So check that video out in the description after watching this one to learn all the new strats needed to use a mace. And I put out a poll on my community tab. You only have to be subscribed with the bell notification set to all in order not to miss these. But I asked you guys what you thought of the mace nerf and almost 20,000 of you guys answered which was amazing with the majority of people not caring that the mace got nerfed. And out of the no's and yeses, more people were happy that the mace got nerfed than those that didn't want to get nerfed. And thanks to everybody who left a comment, there were so many great comments discussing the balance of the game. They fixed the mace's sound so that's no longer under the friendly creatures, but is with all the rest of the weapons. The item which a mace is made out of, which is called a heavy core, when placed in water will no longer delete it, and placing water inside of a heavy core will no longer create no updates when the blocks beside it are removed, which would just make these crazy looking floating water sources, which was not intended. You'll no longer be able to get the overkill advancement just by accidentally feeding a parrot the wrong type of food while holding the mace in your main hand. And parrots weren't supposed to die from being fed carrots anyways, which was also resolved. What questions do you have about the mace's new features? They redid how bad omen works as well as raids. It all starts out with the trial key. So after defeating one of these trial spawners, you get a chance of getting one of these trial keys. Then using the trial key on these vaults, which are now more up into the walls. And then once you use your key on it, there is a chance of you getting some new items. One of the new items includes Ominous Bottle. You can see if you drink this, it's going to give you an hour and 40 minutes worth of Bad Omen level 2. And these bottles can be found between Bad Omen level 1 all the way up to 5. 
And unlike normal drinkable potions, these aren't even considered potions, but they're considered to be bottles similar to like honey bottles or water bottles. And they can uniquely stack up to 64, so you can store up a bunch of them. You can also get these bottles when killing an illager that has the banner which is considered a raid captain. But only if these illager captains are not part of a raid. So now that you got one of these, one of those two ways, you can go ahead and actually drink it. The bottle is removed. You can hear it kind of breaks. There's also a special sound effect as you get the bad omen. And there is a new symbol, which is this crazy looking eyes and, and extra pieces around it, which does look a little bit like the trial spawner. So now with this special effect, you can start ominous events, which are raids are now considered part of, as well as a special type of trial chamber event. These events are optional, so like most players probably won't run into them, but they're also going to be more challenging. So if you enter a trial spawner room with this bad omen on, you can see it now changes over to trial omen which lasts 15 minutes. Now the higher the bad omen you have, the longer this trial omen will last. This will also change out the spawner, so it now turns into a ominous trial spawner instead of just a normal one. You can see that there's crazy blue flames in it, which lets you know that it's going to be a harder than normal type of fight. Now you can already see there's some special stuff going on over here, such as throwing out potions. You can see that the trial spawner is also coming in and just summoning wind charges mid-air. There's one over there, and then all of a sudden it just gets shot. It looks very strange, it just kind of sits there, accumulates, and then pushes the player about. And it could drop these splash potions as well, and it get the different types of effects. Here we got one that has slow falling. There's also fire charges that get dropped, as well as the new oozed potion. Anything that has the ooze effect will then spawn in two slimes, when it dies. This is uh, very strange, but you can see this can be used to make like a slime farm as any mob can be turned into slime. And the players can make this by using aqua potion plus a slime block inside of a brewing stand. And then when the brewing is complete, you can make your very own potion of oozing. Then just turn it into a splash potion, splash it onto any mob you want to. And then all of a sudden, now you got yourself a slime farm which is going to produce even more slime. This will probably be the go-to way to get slime as you can easily automate the rest of the process like turning the slime balls back into slime blocks. There's even special types of arrows which gets dropped from the sky. So you have to watch out for all sorts of things when you are fighting. Obviously the ooze is going to be annoying if mob accidentally has it. it ends up producing more targets that you have to kill so you don't end up dying yourself. The ooze one is so annoying. It almost feels like you can't even finish it because you keep spawning in more. And slimes are immune to the ooze potion. So you don't have to worry about getting completely overrun by slimes when the ooze thing gets going. Slow falling also makes it annoying when the breeze sends you up in the air and then you have to slowly come back down again. And then if you travel over to new spawners, they will continue to be switched over from a normal trial spawner into the new ominous. There's also this new potion effect, which is called Wind Charged. Any mob that has this on them, when they die, they're going to create a kind of Wind Charge Blast. And like the other one, it can also be produced by the player by using Aqua Potion and a full Breeze Rock, which you get from killing breezes here at the Trial Chambers. And then this will get you the potion of Wind Charging for three minutes. You also can reactivate trial spawners, which are already completed, but were completed as a normal trial spawner. You can then start with the ominous one without having to wait for the whole cooldown to go up. It will also spawn in mobs with equipment on. Look at this one here. You got a guy with chain that is also trim, which is crazy looking. Looks like it's trimmed with copper. Now at the moment they said that these mobs will drop their armor, but it says in the future, they'll make it so that they don't drop their armor. And with the armor, it does make them harder to defeat. Now if you started a trial spawner that was already going, it will automatically despawn the current mobs and they come in with the ominous ones. You can see how it deleted all the old mobs and now we come in with some new stronger ones. Here we got a weakness of potion dropped on us. You can also end up with the potion of weaving. Mobs that have this effect on them, when they die, there's a chance that they can spawn cobweb blocks around them. This is great because cobwebs is non-renewable, so you got to make a cobweb farm using this. Plus, this will also make it really annoying while you're in a fight. Any mobs that have this effect are supposed to be able to walk through cobwebs at normal speed. Seems like they're still kind of affected by it. But that would also help the mobs become stronger in these fights, as you're going to get stuck in cobwebs and they're not. And this one could also be brewed by the potion by using a cobweb aqua potion, turning it into a potion of weaving for 3 minutes. Of course you could turn it into splash and then get multiple cobwebs out of a single dose. 
you can also find yourself with the infested effect. Any mob that has this potion on, when they get damaged, there's a 5% chance that they'll spawn in a silverfish. There you go. You can see you can either spawn in one or a couple of them. And these are brewed up using a stone block, which is a bit odd, combined with the aqua potion. Gets you potion of infestation for three minutes. Now in the past, there was a bug when silverfish went into a block. And then when you would break the block, instead of one coming out, two would come out. And you can actually make an infinite XP farm using this. Now we can do this just by having mobs being damaged and they'll constantly produce more mobs which we can use to get XPs out of. Now silverfish themselves are immune to this potion so you can't get like unlimited of them just by hitting them alone. The new potions actually introduce quite a bit of new automation that can be moved throughout the world and not restricted directly to one location. Let me know all the questions you have about these new potions. And when defeating one of these Omnius Trial spawners, they will drop loot. But they also have the chance of dropping a new type of trial key. This is called the Omnius Trial Key. You can see that there's three skulls on the top of this key. And this key doesn't go into normal vaults, but instead special ones which are here in the walls and kind of have this special decoration around them. And this is actually a normal vault that just gets changed over into ominous one. And you can see the difference between them. This one here will give you some better loot. You can see they have like the three looking skulls on them, which is different than these normal ones. So this way you could go for just the nice loot rather than some of the lower tier stuff that the normal trial key will get you. But it's going to be a bit more work to unlock these. Now speaking of loot, they went ahead and also made the normal vault give slightly less items of quality. You can still get ominous bottles from level 1 to 2 in it, the flow batter pattern, as well as trim, but the heavy core is no longer from it. The Guster Banner, as well as Bolt Trim, can also exclusively be found from the Standard Bolt. And since the Heavy Core is no longer in this one, there's a very rare chance of providing a Trident, which is a cool way of getting it rather than having to kill Drowns. Now for the Ominous one, you can get the bottles from level 3 up to 5, Enchanted Golden Apples, the Flow Pattern as well as Trim, the Wind Bust, Breach, and Destiny Enchantments for your Mace, as well as the Heavy Core needed to make the Mace. They also made it so that these will provide you with more higher quality food so you can use them in your next fight. Now the chance of getting one of these keys from the trial spawners is only a 30% chance compared to the 50% chance of getting a normal trial key. So on average you have to fight three of these in order to just get one of these keys. And remember that each key can only be used one time on one vault for one player. So then you have to go to a whole new structure. The Trial Spawner also overall will produce more mobs each time and now are only activated when the player is actually within line of sight rather than just being nearby. That way you don't have to worry about activating a spawner if you can't actually see it and have mobs come from weird locations. Now this corridor area also got a reduction in the number of spawners and they'll no longer generate with several of these in a row. And many other small changes were added to the Trial Chambers. So now that you understand how the whole bad omen thing works, how does it change my stacking raid farms? This means my different types of stacking raid farms got nerfed. Here is my simple version, which also has the hero of the village section added onto it. You guys learn more about them in these videos here. But instead of getting bad omen from the actual captains which hold the banners, now they will drop potions and the potions have to be drank by the player in order to get bad omen again to start the next raid. But since I already have an automatic sorting system, we can just sort these potions out from the rest of them. Just like I can sort away the witch's healing potions with my lay sorters here. And then we can always pipe the potion back over to players so that they can use it to continue the entire raid system. I've also been improving my stacking raid farm versions, including adding in the trick I showed where Ravengers are much weaker in these later 1.20 versions. And I'm even working on a Breeze version which has no pistons. So make sure you're subscribed so you can be the first to see those. And since the raid farm already does need an auto clicker, we would just have the bad omen in the offhand. And then besides just having it attack, we'd also have it hold down use for a moment to restart the raid. This does mean we need a more complicated macro, but it's still possible to automate this farm. So now when you drink one of these near a village, you can get the bad omen level for so much time. And then after that time goes up, once it counts down to zero, then the actual raid starts. And then only then the raiders will spawn in. So we'll have to whack armor stand every once in a while and then drink a new potion to start up a new bad omen. 
you can see how this has been done to slow down the amount of raids coming in. You can see that despite these guys coming from the raid, we can still get the new Omnis bottles because the raid was moved out of the area and they're no longer part of the raid. So we just have to send these bottles back to the player so they can use them again. What do you think of this nerf to the raid farm? Do you think they were too OP? as they were the most productive farms in giving the most unique items from a single farm. And you can also get like emeralds, XP's, plus tons of very useful items all from a single setup. A bug report that I made was finally fixed and that was this weird bug where when you put the bogged mob, which is the new mob coming in 1.21 inside of a boat or any type of riding, it would end up sitting way up in the air unlike the skeleton and this is because it was sitting in there similar to a villager where it thought it wasn't bending its legs. They made the breeze smarter so it won't jump into dangerous areas. Wind charges will no longer be able to be used to activate ender crystals and blow them up probably because it's a little bit too easy to knock out the ones around the dragon fight as you can aim pretty precisely with these things. They also went ahead and fixed advancement when it comes to who needs rockets. As I was saying the player only needed to jump up 7 meters but you really actually have to go up to 8 before getting this. Comparators weren't updating properly when it came to certain types of containers and droppers and observers were ending up in the wrong states. This bug was only in the last snapshot and is no longer here. The italicized names which come from the special explorer maps as well as the ominous banners, when these were placed into item frames, notice that the names were being switched out to normal text. So they changed it so they will also keep their italics. They also fixed this problem where ominous banners, which you get from these hanging on the actual structure, were different than the ones you get from the pillagers, being that they're showing every little step needed in order to make this. Where the ones you get from killing illagers, as it all could dense into a single item. And you no longer have the problem of placing down these special ones from pillagers, and then when you would end up breaking them, they would keep their condensed information but instead would sprawl it all out like the other ones. During these past couple snapshots, slimes and magma cubes were kind of ignoring their spawning properties, ending up spawning on stuff like carpets or spawning in smaller areas than what they can actually fit. So now they went back to the way it was before. They fixed a couple other bugs related to visuals and they also came in and fixed two different crashes when attempting to eat lily pads and frog spawn, which is a new thing you could do with commands and give yourself a special type of bundle. Plus how the new components could crash a game when applied to certain types of enchantments. They also made some changes to how the chat work and its network protocol, as well as we got the new data pack and resource pack to make all these cool new features possible in the game. Now join me live in designing some new automatic raid farms. Otherwise check out this playlist about other simple farms and machines, and don't forget to share what I do with other Minecrafters. Thank you all for watching, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!